As I got older, I got into making tea. Ooh. Yo, I got set four of the One Piece card game, Kingdoms of Entry. We're opening three boxes today as I continue telling my uh, story about how I got into cards. Well, actually, at this point, we're more into how I got into card printing. So if you want to check out the story of how I got into this stuff, you can watch the first two videos of the series. Bless them. There'll be Kingdoms of Intrigue in the thumbnail. That is all I'm talking about for this Shrippen series. But um, yeah, so I I'm gonna backtrack a little bit to back when I was in, well, let's go back to when I was a kid. I was really into printing, always. I loved uh, Dragon Ball and I was always looking for pictures of like Dragon Ball characters that I could like print out on my dad's color printer. And as I got older, I got into making, ooh, ooh, alt art, Vivi, yo, this is gasoline. What the heck, this is gorgeous. Oh my god, the wow. Would you look at that shininess? Holy hexagon. Huh. That's a really good looking card. Wow. 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 Okay. So on to the next box. That's a hit in there. Um, yeah, so I got I got really into um I was really into like customizing clothes when I was a kid. I used to like draw on t-shirts and stuff and and bling them out and you know, I didn't like the stuff I saw in stores as much as the stuff that I like to make. I was, I was into Marvel also. I used to draw a lot of like Marvel characters um, and stitch them onto clothes. And that was kind of how I started making my first clothes. And then after uh, high school, when I was in college, I got into screen printing and I actually decided to do an art major and I focused my art, uh, my art, Focus Studio, Fujitora Leader, yo, this is nuts, what the heck? Oh my goodness. Wow, that is so sick. Anyway, yeah, got really into screen printing because I had been making clothes and screen printing just seemed like an option to just make like the coolest clothes possible or like a lot of them and share a lot more of it. So I did a ton of screen printing, and then after undergrad, I got into uh, sublimation printing. I started printing on these Dragon Ball cards on these t-shirts via sublimation printing. And I also got into printing like rugs and play mats and cards, like all this stuff. So if you look at my Instagram, you can see I post a lot of the different stuff that I make, but I really am a printer. I, I, you know, I've been printing for a very long time and I happened to meet this guy that has this super powerful printer and he kind of showed me a little bit about how to use it and I used the information I have in my head about how to make designs and how to print designs and um, yeah, I started making these custom cards and people responded really well to them. So I just kind of, you know, I think um, there's definitely you know, people, I do sell them, kaizokucards.com, you can check them out, I do sell them. You may have seen them on my YouTube shorts. But um, really for me, it's like a creative outlet. I'm a dentist, so it's not really like, I don't need to print cards and sell them to survive. But I do really enjoy it, and I think it's really cool that people like them. But I, I produce them in pretty low quantities. And um, it's really more of a passion project for me. So I'm not as driven by like trying to make stuff that I think people will buy or that will sell as much as stuff that I just like really want for myself that I think is really cool. Um, and it keeps me more motivated to keep doing it. I, you know, I don't feel like I'm chasing like something with it. I'm just expressing my creativity and like having a blast making stuff that I really like looking at. And I think it's really cool that other people happen to like looking at it too. It's just like pretty flattering actually. I'm like in disbelief of that pretty frequently. I think it's a really, really cool thing. So I love that I get to share the stuff that I make. Um, I really enjoy making things. And I don't know, is there another alt art in this? There's one more box after this. Um, but I think one of the things that has helped me in, in terms of like figuring out the way in which I'm designing things, oh yes, yes, yes. This is my favorite alt art in the set. Yo. I love this card. I love Yamato. If you've noticed, if you've watched my my card creations, you'd notice that I actually make like I think more Yamato cards than any anyone. I just think he's such a cool character. I'm a I'm a Yamato stan. That's the truth. 
All right, so these are our hits from this box so far. There's one more box here. Um, but yeah, you know, since I studied Japanese art history and um, I'm very interested in the way that things are composed, thinking about composition and, and making art, I, um, it's fun for me to make cards because I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm not so much just trying to make stuff that I think will sell as I am like trying to make things that I think are interesting and are kind of pushing the boundaries of like what a card can be. Um, and I go, I draw a lot of inspiration from the One Piece card game. I'm, you know, I don't know if they know what stuff I'm making, but it seems like there's some similar trends in the designs that like we're both using. So that's cool. And I think, you know, the, the way cards are designed and what, what we can do with printing these days, um, bless them, is a way higher ceiling of, of what's possible. And uh, I'm really interested in exploring where the top of that ceiling is. So for me, it's more of a creative exploration where I get to play with form and get to play with the frame of a card and try and explore, you know, what what does it mean for something to be a card or like how does something become a card? And I really like, if you've seen my cards, I, um, I print the text on the case. So like I have this card here that I made, this is a leader. And if you take the case off, you can see the full art of the card. Cause that's one of the things I, I love about these cards is the art's so beautiful, but sometimes the text gets in the way. And that way also, if you get a different art of a leader that you want to play, you can just swap out the leader into the case or put whatever card you, it is you want to look at. And then the text has the, the case has the text. So you can always refer to that to play the game. Um, but that was an idea that I had that, I, you know, I think some people like, I think some people don't like it as much, but to me, it's really more of a, uh, more of a thing that like is important to me that I think is cool. And artistically, I just kind of stand by that because it's the way that I want to make things. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy making cards and, and, and before the one piece card game came out, I kind of went through and bought like every one piece card game I could find that existed before this card game. And uh, that allowed me to kind of see the different design techniques that they were using or employing. Oh, that's our secret rare. Um, and to be able to see that stuff really helped inform how I continue to make things. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this Shrippum series. There's going to be four more boxes or three more boxes here in next week. And uh, we'll see what kind of cool stuff I pull for it. Sang Kyu of Naimasu. And I'll see y'all in the next one. You can see Wink in your Zenkai area and your Z-Deck. Place two, they're making an app for it. You can play the game on an app next year. Anyway, this is all extraneous stuff. Vegeta only has one large tooth on the top and one large tooth on the bottom, I think. Um, this is the whole point. This is about value. Your teeth are crystals. Did you know that? Did you know your teeth are crystals? Anybody know that? It's kind of misdirection a little bit. The enamel 